fast. Bob Ellis notes from the field, big news, spring is here. How do I know that? Well, here in the Muggy on Highlands, I know that because two weeks ago, I saw my first turkey vulture. That is the absolute sign that spring is here. And then I saw swallows. And now, today, we saw morning cloaks. And there are these beautiful butterflies. And we're out here, we're going to try to catch one. So for those of you who didn't get the memo, spring is on. Still in the air. Nice and easy. There we go. Oh my God, they're so beautiful. Look at that. You'll notice the key thing, or you can see that this is an overwintering adult. These morning cloaks are some of the longest lived of all North American butterflies. And one of the coolest things is the family that they're in is the brush foot family. Of course, like all insects have six legs. How many legs do you see there? Whenever I count, I'm counting four. So this isn't an insect. Well, of course it is an insect, but it has these two feet called the brush feet right there. Do you see them? Look, and these are super sensitive organs that they use to taste. And so evolution is selected for a reduction of those legs to these sense organs. So this adult overwintered. If we were to look at the upper surface of these wings, they have this colorful blue speckled band and maybe this one will sit still for us. And the, the name, morning cloak, the common name, um, comes from their obvious kind of dark, uh, dark color. So as if someone is, was in mourning. And one story is told that they have this bright band around them on their upper surface of their wings that uh, much like some person who was in mourning but was tired of being in mourning and wanted to express a little bit of, of, of return to life before mourning. This is, they belong in the family Nymphalidae, which is an enormous family and enormously successful. Let's see if we can look at its upper surface. We'll see if it will show us. Look at those antennae. You want to show off for us, old, old person? <laughs> you can see the reason I say it's old is look how tattered the edge of its wings are. They have super wide distribution and um, typically associated with northern climates. Uh, they're distributed through Europe and Eurasia. And they're very strange in that in their adult form, they drink sap. So there are woodpeckers and um, sap suckers that drill holes in oak trees in this case. And the uh, morning cloaks visit those holes and in those holes, sap runs. And uh, that is what the adults eat, is the sap. They'll, they'll feed from flowers, but for the most part, you'll see them visiting these tree trunks that have all these little series of holes drilled in them by uh, woodpeckers or sap suckers. And they feed on that, that sap. And so do the sap suckers and woodpeckers. And they also eat the insects that are trapped there. Now the, Interesting thing about insects and those insects that are holy, holometabolous, and that means that they go through a larval stage and they pupate and then become adults, is that the young feed on a totally different food source than the adults. And so the larval form of these and are found on a host plant, and that host plant is usually a willow or something in the willow family. There are other host plants, but that in general is true. So as adults that are interested in laying eggs and reproducing, you'll find them there. 
And then um, you'll also find adults feeding on oak trees or the sap of oak trees. So that idea of uh, the larval stage having a different food source than the adult is a pretty cool kind of strategy that's evolved in, this, in the group of insects that are holometabolous or have that complete life cycle. Hey, you know what? You can leave in the comments below those organisms that signal the arrival of spring for you. And uh, it'd be kind of interesting to get a wide geographical response to see how other folks are looking at the world. Thank you.